By learning more about your genome, you have taken a major step preparing yourself for the genome era. Here come the disclosures. From 1999 through 2000, I worked for the Sprint Corporation's chief lobbyist. Part of my job duties did include processing fundraising for Mrs. Billy Cecile Tozan's charity for breast cancer research. Her husband, Louisiana Representative Billy Tozan, co-wrote the 1996 Telecommunications Act with my boss. Representative Tozan's mother passed away from breast cancer, and the cause was very important to him and also to his wife. In 2006, I had no insurance and discovered some abnormalities during a routine exam and received breast cancer screening services from Planned Parenthood and the Avon Clinic at San Francisco General Hospital. I also benefited from some of the American Cancer Society services in 2013 and 2014. There has been quite a bit of publicity surrounding the BRCA1 and BRCA2 genetic mutations. What do these genes do? BRCA1 and BRCA2 are separate human genes that produce tumor suppressor proteins. These proteins help repair damaged DNA and help ensure a cell's genetic material's stability. The BRCA mutations cause DNA damage not to be repaired properly. This causes cells to be more likely to develop additional genetic alterations that can lead to cancer. The BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutations can increase the risk of female breast and ovarian cancers. They are also associated with increased risks of several other types of cancer, and people with the BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutations tend to develop breast cancer and ovarian cancer at younger ages than people who do not. If your parent is a carrier for either one of the BRCA genes, he or she has a 50% chance of passing that mutation on to you. How much does each BRCA gene increase your odds of getting breast cancer by the age of 80? The normal life experience expectancy for most women in advanced nations is between 79 and 96, depending on whether you live in America, Europe, or East Asia. Women with neither gene have a 12% chance of developing breast cancer by the age of 80. Women with the BRCA1 gene have a 72% chance of developing breast cancer by age 80. Women with the BRCA2 gene have a 69% chance of developing breast cancer by the age of 80. Having either BRCA gene also increases your odds of developing cancer in both breasts if you develop it in one. The BRCA genes are also strongly associated with ovarian cancer. BRCA1 increases your odds of developing it from 1.2% to 44% and BRCA2 increases your odds to 17%. You are more likely to carry the gene if you are of Ashkenazi Jewish descent or Dutch or Scandinavian descent or of Icelandic descent. Dutch DNA shows up as Great Britain in many of the tests, but that is a topic for another video. This all sounds very grim. However, many things can affect your chances of developing breast cancer over the years. Age is an obvious factor. Family history is very important. Your odds are far higher if you are of Eastern European Jewish descent or if a male family member has had breast cancer. Your medical professional can ask you a series of questions to determine your risk assessment. Even if you have one of the BRCA genes, you might actually be at low risk of developing breast cancer or ovarian cancer. This is best determined by a medical professional. According to the Susan G. Komen Foundation, most women who get breast cancer do not have an inherited gene mutation. And in the United States, 5 to 10 percent of breast cancers are linked to an inherited gene mutation. Of these, about half of these are linked to BRCA1 or BRCA2. On a personal note, I do carry the BRCA1 gene and had a cousin who passed away from breast cancer. I am of Dutch and Scandinavian descent. Even so, I am considered a low risk for developing breast cancer for a number of reasons, particularly my age and the fact that no one in my immediate family has had it. It is important, however, to get any annual screenings for breast cancer since I do have the gene. If you have either of the BRCA genes, cancer.gov recommends that you start annual screenings at age 25 rather than the traditional age of 40. They also recommend this for men who carry the BRCA gene. 1% of all breast cancer cases occur in men. Prophylactic surgery has been in the media recently, particularly with high-profile celebrities like Angelina Jolie and Christina Applegate. Prophylactic surgery is the removal of some or all of the breast tissue or ovarian tissue in order to prevent the development of breast or ovarian cancer. 
It is not always successful at doing so, although it does show some promising results, reducing the chance of death from ovarian cancer by 80% and the risk of death from breast cancer by 56% or an overall risk of death by 77%, according to cancer.gov. This is a major procedure and you should discuss your particular situation with your healthcare professional. Chemo prevention or the use of medications like tamoxifen or raloxifen to prevent the development of cancer has also had a lot of success in those who have opted for it. There are other genes associated with the development of breast cancer. These include ATM, CDH1, CHEK2, NBN, NF1, PALB2, PTEN, STK11 and TP53, also known as P53. If a direct-to-consumer genetic test shows that you have the BRCA1 or BRCA2 or other inherited genetic mutations linked to breast cancer, the Susan G. Komen Foundation recommends that you have the findings confirmed by genetic testing done in a clinically approved lab. You can get this testing through your healthcare provider or a genetic counselor. The Susan G. Kellerman Foundation recommends getting a genetic test if any of the following apply to you. There is a known BRCA1 or BRCA2 mutation in your family. You had breast cancer at age 50 or younger. A woman in your family had breast cancer at age 50 or younger. A woman in your family had breast cancer in both breasts. A woman in your family had ovarian cancer. A man in your family had breast cancer. Or if your family is of Ashkenazi Jewish descent and you or someone in your family had breast cancer. Your health insurance might cover a genetic test if you are considered a candidate at risk. Genetic tests are only the first step in determining risk for breast cancer. Other tests include mammograms, breast ultrasound, breast MRI scans, newer and experimental breast imaging tests, and of course breast biopsy. Keep in mind that genetics are not the only factors that can contribute to breast cancer risk. Other contributing factors include your ethnicity and genetic ancestry, epigenetic factors, please see the linked videos for more on epigenetics, such as tobacco use, obesity, and many other general lifestyle issues. If you do discover something, keep in mind that there are many resources available to you, including cancer.org, the Susan G. Komen Foundation and their Avon clinics, and many online and real-life support groups. The Human Genome Project has already fueled the discovery of more than 1,800 disease genes. Today's researchers can find a gene suspected of causing an inherited disease in days rather than the years it took before the genome was sequenced. What does this mean for the future? There is a new initiative, the Cancer Genome Atlas, linked below which aims to identify all the genetic abnormalities seen in 50 major types of cancer. We will probably see a whole new generation of targeted interventions, many of which will be drugs that are much more effective and cause far fewer side effects than those available today. You can expect to see individualized analysis based on your unique genome, which will lead to personalized and preemptive medicine. By tailoring recommendations to each person's DNA, your healthcare team will be able to work with you to focus efforts on the specific strategies from diet to high-tech medical surveillance that are most likely to maintain your individual health. video, please subscribe and keep checking this channel to learn how to get the most out of your DNA test results. Thank you for watching.